Good morning, and thank you for joining us. This is No Sound Bites Allowed, and I am your host, Michael Voss, the Dragon of the Southern Tier. I'm here with you today, January 11th of 2022. It's currently about 4.55 a.m. So as you're having your morning coffee, I'm sure you may be just finding out about the news that New York City Mayor Eric Adams has decided to use to hire his brother, an act of nepotism, without doubt, and very likely corrupt, because he's the only person he can trust. He's afraid of white supremacists. He's afraid of anarchists. Of course, his brother is a parking director, so that's why he needs to be the chief of the police. Fantastic. And maybe you saw that news and thought, well, it's not such a big deal. New York's always been corrupt. That's okay. And then maybe you said, well, I heard about the news that an activist, an Antifa activist, has tried to bomb, with a pipe bomb, American citizens. That he was out and there was a plot to blow up American citizens on January 6th because they were having a rally. In modern politics, when you're looking at the progressive left, the answer to anyone saying something that you don't like or that you don't agree with? Well, for Antifa, the answer is violence. Extreme violence. Thank God this person was captured and is under arrest and was prevented from using the several bombs and weapons that he had on hand. I truly believe America should be talking more about what Antifa has been doing and how much of a danger they present. But all of that is not what we're going to be talking about today. Is secondary to the news that is affecting all of America and will affect it for decades to come. And we'll explain exactly what we mean in just one second. Now, if it is the first time that you are seeing our channel, good morning and thank you for joining us. We are happy to see you're part of our audience. We want you to know that we do long-form political commentary. And every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we do a live stream with you. We reach out on all social media that we can, that we reach out to you and to get your text, your chats, and your tweets, to hear your voice, to tell us what you think about the issues that are affecting us all, from anywhere in the globe, overseas and in America, to reach out to us because we believe in your First Amendment right, your ability to have free speech. Now, whether your government agrees, whether the internet overlords agree or not, every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we look for your voice to tell us what you think about what's happening in the world. We hope you'll join us this Sunday. With that said, let's look at what's happening today. While you were asleep last night on January 10th, a lot happened around the world. And almost all of it has to do with the United States and international policy. And this is important. Now, we've been talking about this for a while. We were telling you about this back on December 19th of 2021, the flawed policies of the Biden-Harris administration in dealing with Russia, China, North Korea, and Iran. And we then followed that up just about uh, what two weeks later when we were we're speaking with you on January 6th, last week, five days ago, telling you about the problems with the Chinese hypersonic missiles, the launches by North Korea, and the problems at the Ukraine border with Russia, and the 100,000 troops that they have poised there. Russia has only gotten worse. Russia has had 2,000 paratroopers go into Kazakhstan and kill over 100 people. Russia is, in, is increasing its landmass, going back to the old days of the USSR, the old Soviet Union. And on the chopping block right now is the Ukraine. And the United States is looking at this, well, they're looking to give up the Ukraine. We've heard for over a month now that the United States has been pushing the Ukraine to give up just a little bit more of its land, to do just a little bit more appeasement, just like they did in 2014 under the Obama-Biden administration, where they gave up the Crimea. And we know that talks 
happened yesterday, and they failed. They fell apart. Secretary Antony Blinken, ahead of the talks, had been saying that Moscow would face severe and massive consequences. But what consequences truly? Because as it was announced yesterday from the Washington Post, experts have questioned the extent to which financial measures would influence Russia, which is already under sanctions for the annexation of the Crimea, um, the malign cyber activity, and the treatment of opposition figure Alexei Navalny, who was poisoned last year and later imprisoned. Russia is not concerned. The Kremlin has been going forward, and they are pushing. And we see that the United States is in a terrible position. Because the Biden administration right now is fighting with Germany. They're fighting with uh, the Ukraine, trying to twist them into an appeasement mode, trying to give Russia what it wants to prevent a war. Because the United States has already said they won't put any troops to in to protect the Ukraine. That is a fact. And now we hear that the negotiations are about whether or not we will expand NATO, whether we will allow short and mid-term range missiles into NATO countries, that we will limit the amount of exercises we do with NATO countries, all of that meant to deter Russia from doing exactly what it is doing right now. As reported by Politico yesterday, that the Biden administration is going up uh, and going to Congress and trying to get the Democrats to stop the GOP from preventing $11 billion in spending and authorizations on the Nord, to, Nord Stream 2 pipeline, a gas pipeline that is enriching Russia, that is providing natural gas to Europe and specifically in Germany. The Biden administration is saying, no, you can't stop this. We have to keep this because it's a negotiating Tactic. Well, it's not much of a negotiating tactic when this was something that was done against the will of many Americans and against the best interests of the United States. And that's why Senator Ted Cruz has been against this. In fact, Democrats have been against this. In fact, if we listen to Senator John Tester, um, a Democrat out of Montana, he mentions we've got to make sure if we do sanctions that the sanctions are focused on the problem and not collateral, affecting Germany and our allies in Europe. He went on to say that the Biden administration has to do a better job of messaging what the flaws are in Cruz's proposal. Because Senator Cruz has had support from Democrats in preventing the sanctions, the U.S. paying for a pipeline in Russia. Especially when that very same Democratic Party, that same Biden-Harris administration, shut down the U.S. pipeline with our ally, Canada. But yet we're funding the pipeline in Russia as Russia is using that position to its advantage to be able to then turn around and attack our friends and allies in the Ukraine and to place pressure against Germany. Senator Chris Murphy, a Democrat out of Connecticut, is lobbying Democrats to try and fight against Cruz and to ensure that Russia still gets the funding for the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, even as they have 100,000 troops on the border of the Ukraine. According to Senator Chris Murphy, I'm a big supporter of Z uh, President Zelensky of the Ukraine, but often he misreads American politics. And I think it would have been better for him to have stayed out of this one. This is not good policy for the United States to allow Ted Cruz to break us from our transatlantic partners in the middle of the delicate negotiation over the future of European Russia, Europe, Russia policy. The Ukraine has sided with Ted Cruz and says, please stop the Nord, to Nord Stream 2 pipeline. Do not provide the $11 billion of funding that Russia desperately wants and needs. Do not go forward with this. Help us and protect us from Russia. And the Democrats are saying, no, 
Senator Chris Murphy goes on to say, remember, this is a German government that switched their position. Why would you sanction Germany when they just switched their position to one we've asked them to undertake? They know that the Nord Stream has been used and will be used in the future against Germany and Europe. That this is a, while they do need the energy, since the United States won't provide it, since the Biden administration has made it almost impossible for the United States to provide liquid gas to Europe, something that we could actually do. But at the same time, what's more important to Germany and Europe? An empowered Russia that is grabbing land like crazy or having the power. Well, they made their decision and they understand that the price of gas is going up at this moment. Natural gas prices are going up because the Russia has already turned off their power. They're already turning off their energy. And Germany knew that walking in. And they're still saying, no, you have to get out of the Ukraine. You have to leave the Ukraine alone. But Biden is working against the Ukraine. They're working in favor of the Russian government as they are going in on a land grab. It doesn't make sense. And yet we're supposed to think that Russia is somehow afraid of sanctions while the Biden administration is making sure that no sanctions are being put on Russia at this moment to stop them from what they have already done, increasing violence and attacks and supporting the, the destruction of the Ukraine government on its eastern borders, they have no punishment coming from the United States because the Biden-Harris administration is so weak that they're afraid to turn off the money flow. And we're supposed to think that Russia is afraid, that they're going to back down, that they're not going to wait until the Biden-Harris administration twists the arm of the Ukraine until they give them more land. But it gets worse because we're seeing that North Korea once again has fired another hypersonic missile. At the same time that we are negotiation in negotiations with Russia, obviously that gets the attention of the world and especially the Biden-Harris administration, and it makes them fold. Everyone is seeing that because that's exactly what happened in Afghanistan. The Taliban moved forward with their military might and the Biden-Harris administration folded and ran away. Russia is using the same tactic and now North Korea has looked at that, seeing how it's potentially very lucrative, they are now firing their hypersonic missiles. And this hypersonic missile was even faster than the last one. Last week, they fired a hypersonic missile that moved at five times the speed of sound. Just yesterday, they fired a missile going 10 times the speed of sound and both times they targeted the missiles just over Japan, our ally. So this is a danger not only to South Korea, our allies and friend, even as Kamala Harris insults South Korea, wipes her hand in disgust in shaking the hand of President Moon of South Korea. Yes, the UN has denounced this. They have said that this is violating a bunch of different regulations and codes just like Russia is violating all kinds of agreements in the UN by having their troops on the border of the Ukraine. But they don't care because it doesn't matter. What does matter is will the Biden-Harris administration fold? Will the Biden-Harris administration, who is desperate to have some kind of a win, especially in 2022, the midterm elections, they need something so that they can make Democrats look good and have them viable in elections. Everyone knows this is the fact. Everyone knows that this is what they are trying to do. And everyone knows that the Biden-Harris administration have been weak on the U.S. southern border, on Afghanistan, Russia, China, and now North Korea. Even at this moment, the United States is trying to have a conversation with North Korea. And North Korea is saying, no, we won't even have a conversation unless you lift the sanctions. The Biden-Harris administration are getting desperate. 
That is a very big problem, as obviously North Korea has more than one hypersonic missile already built. They are testing them and they are getting faster, which means they have the technology and several versions of the technology. And according to The Guardian, nuclear talks that would give North Korea the opportunity to seek economic and security guarantees from Washington have not been held since 2019, when a second summit between uh, Kim Jong-un and Donald Trump ended prematurely after they failed to agree on sanctions relief in return for moves to partially dismantle North Korea's nuclear arsenal. The Biden administration has said it, it is open to talks without preconditions, but insists it will not abandon its goal of denuclearization. North Korea has said it also is ready to negotiate, but only if the U.S. and other countries drop their, quote, hostile, end quote, policies, a presumed reference to the sanctions and joint military drills. The Biden administration has already given away its hand. In Russia, we gave away our hand. No military, that's not going to happen. And we're already negotiating and saying, well, we're going to limit our defense of Europe and any drills in Europe. That's the conversation happening right now in Vienna with the Russia. We know that right now, North Korea is telling them to break. And the Biden administration has done so. They said, no preconditions. We'll talk to you. Please come to the table. We need a win. This is a horrible case of politics overriding national security and international policy. It is ridiculous and it is bad and it is hurting the United States. And I wish I could say that there was no other problem, but that's not the case. Because even as that is happening, we have the Iran nuclear deal. Something that we have always been against on this channel, something that we have covered, where then-Secretary John Kerry, under the Obama administration, admitted to the world that the United States had funded global terror by removing sanctions and providing Iran with hundreds of billions of dollars. And now, as we hear from the Times of Israel, expectations for a new Iran nuclear deal are going through. Even in Israel, they admit and acknowledge that a deal is likely and is, in, is about to come through. As the French have said, we have been heading in a positive direction in the last few days but time is of essence. They're pushing forward. They're rushing to get a deal done. And in the rush to get a deal done with Iran, they're willing to make a bad deal. Now, there are other indications that are pointing to the same direction of a deal being done. South Korea's Vice Foreign Minister Choi Jong-kung uh, visited Vienna last week to discuss giving Tehran $7 billion in Iranian assets that have been frozen, which cannot be released without the U.S. approval. Again, that's the United States releasing $7 billion. Even the Ayatollah Khamenei, who has said consistently, death to America, who has said consistently that Iran will make a nuclear weapon even with the Iran nuclear deal in place, he said, quote, we will not surrender to pressure from the enemy, but negotiations and engagement with the enemy are another matter. They've got nothing to lose. There seems to be growing confidence in Tehran that Iran can live without an agreement if it needs to. Quote, then the, if they do go back to the deal, they can present it as not giving in, but we simply achieved what we wanted to, according to uh, an analyst, Zimt. Iran has the flexibility. They are not in trouble. They are in the driver's seat here. Joe Biden needs the deal. He needs something to bring to Democrats for 2022 to say that there is a victory, that he has a success internationally. And Iran doesn't care. They don't need this deal. They already have been living with the sanctions and their economy is improving even with the sanctions in place. But what they want are the sanctions to be released 
so that they can increase the net global terror just like they did in 2016. You don't have to believe me on that. Look at the Arab news in their editorial, which came out yesterday. Why no deal in Iran is a better deal than a bad one. And they state in here very clearly, the first problem is that a bad deal would allow Iran to advance its ballistic missile program, which is a core part of its nuclear program without any restrictions. The regime's expansion of its ballistic missile program poses a threat to the stability of the region and the national interests of other countries for several reasons. For example, the regime has not been shy about showing off its ballistic missile capabilities and threatening other governments. Iran's expanding ballistic missile program and repeated tests will inevitably lead to further destabilization, militarization, and an arms race in the region. A bad deal. If we make the deal with Iran and allow them to continue to work on ballistic nuclear missiles, to gain technology from North Korea, which they have gotten in the past, to help them make a better ICBM, then the entire Middle East will become even more dangerous than it has already been. And again, they state, thirdly, a bad deal will help the flow of funds to the treasury of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, or otherwise known as the IRGC. This would help the IRCG and its elite branch, the Quds Force, provide more financial, military, and intelligence assistance in their militia and terror groups in several countries, including Iraq, Yemen, Lebanon, and Syria. Joe Biden politically needs a win, and Iran increases global terror. And they get to build a nuclear ballistic missile. And according to analysts across the globe, the United States is going to do it and endanger not just the Middle East, not just our only allies in the Middle East, which is Israel, but Europe as well. The Biden-Harris administration has failed at every key point of international politics since 2021. They have done apparently nothing right. There are thousands of Americans who have been left in Afghanistan, and they lied to the American people about that. They are lying about the Iran nuclear deal providing safety to the United States and the Middle East. They have been inefficient and ineffective when dealing with Russia or with China, who is continuing to build up its forces and threaten Taiwan. Everyone in the world is looking at the same thing. Biden-Harris administration doesn't know what it's doing. They are weak players and they are willing to give up everyone, including American citizens. And so it is a free grab bag at this moment. I hate to start the morning off with bad news, ruin your coffee, but you need to know the truth. Because this news is, everyone in the world is seeing this. Everyone in the world is paying attention to this news. And in the United States, well, the news media is talking about January 6th. They're talking about our elections. They're not talking about what damage is being done by the Biden-Harris administration. Someone has to tell you. And we have to realize that if we are so focused on the midterm elections and we're not paying attention to what we are doing to our allies and setting ourselves up for in the future, it really won't matter. We need to remind our elected officials that their first job isn't to get reelected, it is to protect the United States and its interests, and then to protect our allies, and then after dealing with the domestic issues in the United States, like inflation at double digits, then they can worry about getting reelected because they've done their job first and have a reason to be reelected. Perhaps you think I'm too upset about this. Maybe you don't think that the international policy is as big a deal. Maybe you don't believe we are edging closer and closer to global wars. And I hope you're right. If you, I truly do. 
Even if you agree with me, I hope I am wrong. I am hope these concerns are overblown. But when we look at what is happening and the consequences, I don't think we are. But we want to hear what you have to say about it. From anywhere in the world, we want to hear your comments about where does the United States stand? Are we giving up too much? Are we giving away too much too cheaply? You tell us. And we hope to see you every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.